automate the system to do the posting to the general ledger and the creation of the trial balance. We need to, however, still understand this and the only way to really understand it is to do it so that we can then see when there's problems in the system so that we can understand what the system is doing when it kind of generates this trial balance so that we can then drill back down from the trial balance to the source documents to the data that has originally been input in order to troubleshoot problems with the ending data. Let's consider a few of these accounts uh, in turn. We looked at the cash account. Let's consider now the accounts receivable account here. The accounts receivable account, we are having an asset account. That means that of course the debits will always be winning. You may have learned that when considering the T accounts, when we consider the T accounts, we may have been thinking about this primarily in the case of we add up all the debits, then we add up all the credits and subtract them. And in this case, we would get 780 debits over credits. But note that the benefit of a trial of a general ledger in this format, the benefit of using Excel, is that it's very easy for us to also calculate a running balance. So note that this is the same as a T account in essence, in that a T account is a shorthand way to write the debits and credits by hand and then figure out by adding up the left and right side, the debit and credit side, and subtracting them what the balance is. But if we put this into a computer system, we can just add a, another column very easily and then have a running balance. And so we still have our T here, but now we have another running balance on the right hand side. And that just means that we have zero starting here. And then we had 13 increasing on the debit side. Debits will increase a debit balance account, bringing that balance to 13,000 debits winning. Then we had a credit of 13. It's a debit balance account. Credits are the opposite. Opposite makes it go down, back down to zero in this case. Then we had a debit of 650. The debits being the, the type of account we are in, normal balance debits, increasing the normal balance to 650. We then have another debit of 780, bringing that balance from 650 up by 780 to 1,430. We then have a credit of 650, bringing the balance down from 1,430 down by 650 credit to 780, that then our ending balance. Also note, we should see a pattern here in that we can see what is happening and we should be able to interpret pretty much what's happening in the accounts receivable, I should say in the accounts receivable, what that pattern is, meaning if the debits represent invoices we sent out. If we look at the journal entry, back to the journal entry where this was posted from, we can see that we had a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to revenue. So here's the credit to revenue over here. Here's the debit to accounts receivable. That typically means we did work, we sent an invoice out. Then we have the credit to accounts receivable. That tip, we're getting paid for the work that we did in the past. So here's the receivable, we're getting a credit and we're debiting cash, cash being received. Here's the cash being received. Here's the credit to the receivable. And that's gonna be a typical pattern in receivable, meaning we're gonna send the invoice out, people owe us money, then we're gonna get the money and we should be able to tick and tie those out. Here's another instance of that. We sent an invoice out here, same journal entry up top, and the debit to accounts receivable, the credit to revenue. And then down here, we paid it off, and we should be able to tick and, or we didn't pay it out, we got paid on this, meaning the accounts receivable, the IOU to us is decreasing, and we have the debit going to cash. Here's the debit to cash. Here's the credit to accounts receivable. In the middle there, we had another invoice that went out. This 780 increase in the receivable and increasing revenue. There's the increase to revenue. There's the increase to the receivable. Of course, that is what has not yet been paid. That is what still remains in the accounts receivable account. If we take a look at another account for an example, that being the revenue account, in this case, we have the revenue starting at zero. It's increasing by 13,000, then by 650, then by 780. Note that the revenue account is representing 
uh, credits, all of our accounts are representing credits with brackets, and we have the credit in the credit column when considering the general ledger account. Also note that revenue only has credits, meaning it's only going up. Revenue typically does not go down, and that will be the pattern then. When we look at revenue, we should just 